So are you interested in vans, class B RVs like this one? Maybe you're wondering how to personalize your van to match your RV lifestyle. Maybe you're just curious about vans and class Bs in general and wanna whet your appetite on what that might do for you and your RV lifestyle. Today, we're gonna to tour a $65,000 build out on a Sprinter 4x4 chassis, customized with an amazing rooftop tent and solar configuration offered by Off Highway Vans in Salt Lake City. Stay tuned. tuning in today. Really appreciate that. My name is Scott. I am your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, YouTube channel dedicated to the RV lifestyle, the Class B van lifestyle in particular. Today, we're going to introduce you to Kendall. He was one of the principals at Off Highway Vans in Salt Lake City. He helped me get my lift on my van organized. That's a separate video. Be sure and see that. I added three inches to my van for additional clearance, which was amazing. But today, what Kendall's going to show us is an amazing van that they call the Sundance Kid Off Highway Vans. It's one of their most popular models built on a Sprinter. That was recorded in October of 2020. And my question for you as we roll into this is, is this the kind of content you like to see? If so, give it a thumb up. And if you have comments about this van itself, type them in below as we watch the video together and uh, let me know, is this something you'd be interested in? And if so, why? Let's jump into the interview and tour with Kendall. All right, so we got a special guest today on uh, the channel, Go Small, Live Large. Uh, this is Kendall. My niece's name is Kendall. I'm not sure if I met a guy <laughs> named Kendall before, so that's pretty cool right off the bat. It works. Um, so I'm holding my iPad here. We got a couple questions. So what makes Kendall kind of special is that we are in their shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. And you can hear it's a working shop, which is really great. So, but Off Highway Van's been going on for a little bit more than three years now. So the owner, Aaron Fott, who uh, you guys will actually see in another video, hopefully later today, he started the company actually just by himself. He had a buddy who wanted a van and he had some old history and just building. And uh, he actually came from an engineering platform. So he actually was making race parts and kind of got to the point with that company where he thought, you know, I, that was fun, but let's do something a little bit more fun. And that's building camper vans. So. That's where you can kind of see something like this, where it's a lot more of a fun topic to talk about than just, you know, racing parts is great, but <laughs> building something with a fridge and getting people on the road is a lot more fun too. That's absolutely true. Yeah. So you guys, uh, it's a little curious because I'm down here to have my van lifted. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. But you also build out vans. So you do yeah. outfitting of already existing and then custom build. Is that the way you do Exactly. Yeah. So this one behind us is the Sundance Kid which is one of our models that we, probably one of our most popular models for two people. You can do a third if you want to throw someone on the seat, but you probably want something a little wider. But uh, our Sundance kit, so two people. We do a lot of custom builds though too. So a lot of people will look at this as just like an inspiration, just a starting point to get going with. And then you can do something down the road, like maybe you want a different chair option or Perhaps you don't like our galley right there. So we're really flexible on a lot of custom stuff we can do. Um, who is your guys' ideal customer? We're really looking for anyone who's trying to go out, you know, go off-road, of course in the name, but go out longer, stay out farther. That's the idea behind it. So you won't see a whole lot of things that some other builds may have that might require extra maintenance or maybe you have to fill it up. So a good example of that is a propane tank. A lot of our builds won't include propane stuff because we'd much rather keep you something more sustainable like solar or, Diesel. Yeah. That stuff works a little bit better. Okay. But our, our ideally, our customer, we have some folks who go retirees who are trying to get out and go golfing across the country all the way to the one guy who's a trail runner and just needs something to be able to live in the desert for a week and not have to worry about anything. Right. So any customer that wants to make it happen. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now we get a lot of people working from home who need, you know, not just living area, but they need a desk for here. And all of a sudden you have kids that can't go to can't go to class anymore and they now need to do class in their new home so it really ranges it's now instead of just a camper van now it's for some people it's their home if yeah. not their second home that's great so want to give us a tour of the rig yeah absolutely let's that's get started no problem. so let's start with the front of the vehicle and we'll go all the way back starting from the bottom all the way to the top so first things first is going to be a winch on this guy kind of talked to us talked to you a little bit earlier about getting a build you know going out farther staying out longer 
Ideally, we want to be able to have a situation where people can bail themselves out if they want, right? Be able to take care of themselves. So we do the winch install, do a little bit of fabrication here, cut out slot to fit the actual loops through here. Then we swing around to the front. We're gonna throw some bigger tires on here. Got the uh, good rich behind you, but we're gonna get some nice bigger tires on there for you, especially with the four x four. So this is a four x four diesel Mercedes. A little bit of the front seat. Nothing too crazy going on here, but I will say that that Mercedes screen up top, super helpful for navigation. That's definitely a feature that uh, a lot of our customers like to roll forward with. Then moving back into the cargo area, because it is diesel, you're gonna get a heater up towards the front as well, which is really nice just to get heat going from the cabin all the way up into the cargo area. From all the way from the bottom up to the top, that's where we're gonna get some of that fabricated stuff that we like to do here at OHV. So we do an aluminum shelf that we powder coated to match the rest of the interior. Really good space to throw maps or maybe you got some gear, a jacket, random stuff you just wanna throw up top. Otherwise, this is all dead space that we can use. Kind of keeping in top with the top up here, we got a little bit of L-Track. Really great for throwing any add-ons. Some people like to throw carabiners or maybe a cargo net that can be screened across. Magnetic closing cabinets on this. So nothing's gonna come flying out while you're down, running down the road. Then moving on down, this is actually gonna be our aluminum cabinet as well. We powder coated this guy. Pretty big. Yeah. Good size for a little pantry. Some people don't want a flush mounted cooktop. So we'll actually have a, uh, an outlet we'll throw here on the wall in case they wanna take it out, store it up above. Sink over on this guy with a little cover. And then as we move down the galley, some little comfort creature comforts little sponge tray and then down to your water storage so on this guy we do two six gallon or two little uh reliance tanks throw a little hose on here You're gonna have your fresh water all over to your gray water really easy in case you need to replace those guys you can go to any local outdoor retailer and just replace those in case they get a little gross or anything to get the water pump on for that super easy just reach on over here and you're gonna hit your h2o pump on the panel Panel is super easy for folks that are trying to get any of their electrical stuff taken care of. We don't like to do any of those, you know, little RV images that show you what little part to turn on and off. It's as simple as just turn on your inverter, off, on. Oh, I need a little light. No problem. Oh, I don't need any light. And we'll turn that off. Then you got your heater panel, some outlets, cigarette lighter on there and a USB guy up top. And then just a display to get an idea of what your wattage is on your, on your batteries. Um, so question on the um, on the cooktop. So you're yeah. using induction. Mm -hmm. So there's no propane on board, is that right? No propane, correct. Yeah. yeah. So it just adds another component that takes some upkeep and now you gotta keep it fueled up. And yeah. Uh, it's a lot better with the induction. Um, and then tell me about the, the fridge. I'm a big on yeah. the fridge. Yeah. So right now this is an isotherm fridge. We've also done Dometic in the past. So we're we're interchangeable on both of them. But nice little fridge combo, little tray on the bottom. Freezer up top. Just enough for a martini. Just enough for a martini, yeah. A little shaker. Comes with a little cool, yeah. It gets you set up for cocktails right off the bat. And that hooks up to your solar as well. So, and then this whole unit, the whole galley uh, itself is gonna be aluminum powder coat as well. So no wood rattling like that. The only wood is gonna be the countertop itself. And of course you get a little extension just in case you need a little bit more room. Yeah, got a little canopy. Turn these guys and the canopy windows will turn up and out. And we cut all the windows ourselves too. So we start with just a metal box. First things first, let's start uh, Let's start from the bottom. Got a little bit of storage underneath these boxes. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Big enough to put a cassette toilet if you need to. Some customers decide to go that route. More storage here as well. A lot of room. And then last but not least is going to be your electrical tucked away back here in the corner. So just in case we do need to do any maintenance, super easy to get to. Lighting running across the top, back behind those panels is always nice too. Just so you guys can see, it does a little bit of a, kind of showed it earlier, but kind of nice to see a little soft touch down and then nice soft touch back up. Let's see here for the bed. Actually, if you don't mind holding that real quick. On your bed system, so you'll notice this is the backrest for the bed itself. And then if we need to, we can actually pick it up. There's one handle on the right and comes and sits up to extend the whole bed. Oh, wow. So now your whole bed, if you want, you can lay front to back or you can go side to side, whatever really works for you. And how big is this approximately? Oh man, I think it's, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but 
it's it's big enough to where we have a lot of tall guys who I have it's no problem at all. Way bigger than Lily. Lily is uh, my van. Uh, it's the Murphy bed, about four by six. Cool. You can definitely get two people in here. Oh yeah, no problem at all. Two people, you do great. I would say with these little sandwich, you know, kind of the cushions going like this, you may want to lay front to back this way, but it's totally up to you. And then we'll also do some build flares on the sides. So where those canopy windows are, you get a little bit more room, just tuck to the outside, maybe throw enough room for a book. Yeah, you get about a couple inches. Just enough stuff to throw on the side when you're going to sleep at night. And if you don't need this extra bolster, I'll call it, um, you can just leave it down and just have kind of fun with it. You can actually bring it down, or if you really want, and just to get a, a lot more room and get access to that garage area, there's another panel. So one on the right here, we'll lower it. Ton of, ton of storage space. So, and we can walk around for this guy too and show you the back, but a lot of space. This is going to be where the little mounts go into where you want the bench to rest on that left side. But as you can tell, really clean on the left and possibly to mount more things if you want to. Uh, one last thing I noticed just at our feet is going to be some L-Track slots. Another good modular system. Uh, we like to use that guy to actually put some uh, captain's chairs into. Oh, that's nice. Really easy to take the build from just taking two people. Now you're taking three people. Yeah. All right, so coming around the back here. All right, so a couple things starting off from the bottom. Nice step to get up on. Also some L-Track from the front and the back. Really good spot to put some mounted, uh, some fork mounts here, store your bicycles. We'll also do a tray that can pull out too. Kind of nice in case you don't want to have to lay out all the way out just to get your stuff in the back. Fender box covers. Get a little bit of stuff in there if we want, but it's really a lot more for noise reduction. So we do a lot of things on there to really help out with kind of keeping that noise down to a minimum, especially with the bed being right above. Just in case you're doing any maintenance or something like that and you need to look around, got a little switch on the side, take a look at that light. This guy. What is this the, guy? The Big Kahuna Shower. So this is one of our shower solutions that we can use for folks who are looking for something a little bit more minimal. Um, kind of keeping in mind a lot of our customers want builds that can take care of all the little creature comforts that you might need, but sometimes you just need a shower. Other people might do a water tank over on this side, along with their water pump that's hooked up to it. And then a shower hose that comes out the back. Cheap, easy solution for this guy, especially build with like this that just has the bare necessities. Wow, you can really see the uh, steel framing here, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's all, that's all fabricated by us. And we work with a lot of local vendors to make sure it looks the way we want. Super. And then last is going to be a little bit of outlets, little charging ports on the side over here, just in case you want to throw some things in. And then when you look at the doors, throw on these nice panels, give it a little bit of durability, some scuffs, but we cut all the windows out. All this fabricing is done by us as well. So most of the time we just get a band that just has metal all along the walls, kind of like you kind of see over there <laughs> where it's just getting started on a build. And then we'll bring it up to this. So that's the interior of the van. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top. So yep. this is a uh, really fascinating up here. Kendall, I see a pop-up tent and a solar panel. What's going on up here on top? Well, we got a lot going on. So because you have all that space up there, now you have a whole lot of real estate to where you can throw on even more gear. So for this guy, just to get him set up in the first place of how you get up there is gonna be that ladder mounted to the rear door. That little uh, bolt that's coming out, that's gonna keep, keep a uh, spare tire housed up nice and neat. But then once you're ready to crawl up on top of the roof rack, you can use that ladder step on top. There are ribs across the top so you can stand up there. Maybe if you want to lunch or get a little sunbathing. And then of course the rooftop tent that we partner with Roof Nest for. These guys are great for two people, kind of folds to an angle a little bit to where you can get two people nice and comfortably. Uh, I'm six feet tall and could fit two up there, no problem at all. And then on top of that is going to be your solar panel. So instead of giving that real estate to the back of the rack, why not mount it to the roof of the tent and use that space instead? So we have panels that can mount on the top, connects up with your whole solar system on the interior of the van. And then of course, the nice thing is uh, you never have to get rid of that stuff. It just can live on top of the tent. You get access to the tent all the time. You don't have to crawl over the panels to get into the tent. So overall, a really nice complete solution for someone looking to fit two people pretty easily on top of their roof rack. So this is really cool. I want that for my room. Uh, I got an air conditioner unit. So air conditioning on this is, how's that work? Air conditioning, this guy didn't want an air conditioning unit. 
So we kept it a little bit simpler form. You might've seen the max fan that goes right into the roof, but we can also do an undermounted AC or we can do a roof mounted AC. We even have, uh, because it's our roof rack, we're actually able to cut out a hole for the AC unit to fit. And plus we do the wiring for it. So we have the capability to throw lithiums on there, make sure it's running all the time, even if you don't have short power. Let's talk about, um, so we talk about floor plans a little bit and you guys are kind of modular. What's, what's, tell me about your approach on yeah. plans and chassis. So is it sprinter only or do you guys have choices? Good question. So. Uh, yeah, start with the chassis first. So we actually right now are working on sprinters and promasters, but we're actually really looking forward to working on some transits here, hopefully moving into the new year. A lot of the skill set that we have in basically our wheelhouse is very easy to transfer over to something like the Connect, um, especially with something like Aaron's background where we can take these systems and just apply to a new body. On the flip side of that, you'll notice on that panel that we actually have our, ba uh, our badge and then the model name, so the Sundance Kid. So the hallmark of the Sundance Kid in terms of the floor plan is kind of this bench seat option, right? And then the bed that can fold up and down. You'll other see other options that are gonna change this base seat probably the most. So our dock holiday, for example, is going to turn into a bench seat that can fold down into a full bed for three or four if you want. Um, four is a little bit tighter, but you can get four kids in case you want. Might be a little bit of a fight on the way to the campground, but it'll work. <laughs> and then on the flip side of that, we'll also have some builds where maybe they don't want this bench entirely and instead they just want to have one chair or perhaps they don't want a refrigerator. Overall, we're pretty modular with the kind of stuff that we look at. I just talked to a couple the other day that said, well, let's get rid of just this one box. That way we can crawl through, get to the back area, and then we'll have these two benches face each other, kind of like a cafe style. Get a little chair table that comes up over the top. Now you got a little table that can face each other, play some cards, and then if you need to, you can turn it into something like a lunch table too. So, so. I'm glad you, uh, Kendall mentioned the, the um the table. So you guys don't have a permanent table in this floor mm -hmm. plan. So maybe talk about that because as this audience knows, one of the reasons I love my Travado is because of a permanent table mm -hmm. and from working from the van, the corporate job and otherwise, it's really important to have that set up for me. So how do you guys mm -hmm. approach tables? So we have two solutions to our tables really. Number one is going to be a floor mounted kind of marine table. We cut a little hole and have a, have a mounting point, turn the tube on top, throw the table mounted. The other one is going to be a Lagoon table, L-A-G-U-N, for the folks out there who maybe want to install their own. All it is is a simple mounting bracket, goes on the side here, and has three arms that come up to the side and to swivel. We have some folks who say, well, that table is really cool, but what if I want to mount it over on this side? Then you can take your swivel, turn it around, and now you have kind of a pseudo desk chair in case you need to work that way. So we've done that as well, take the mount, and then it shares the same table. So, so cool, what a great tour, huh? Mm -hmm. um, He's a natural at this. What do you think? <laughs> hey, if you're getting anything out of this, sure to appreciate a thumb up, right? Give a comment. What do you think about Kendall his vans, off-highway vans in general? Pretty cool. Um, you want one of these things? You're probably asking how much is it? So maybe Kendall would be good enough to talk about price ranges mm -hmm. and time for delivery. Vans are really hot right now. So of course, if you want to place an order today, what, what's the time frame look like? All right. So right now, the Sundance Kid we have priced out for $64,500. That's going to get you a lot of the features that you see here. The only things that you might see a little bit different are going to be the roof rack and the tent. Those guys are going to be additional add-ons. But if you go on our website, click on the Sundance Kid option, and you can see the base build of everything that's included for that price. Everything, of course, is custom. Some people like to look at something and say, well, I kind of like the Sundance Kid, but I want to throw L-Track and Captain's Chair. No problem. You have our base build, and then we can just do little add-ons from there. So when you say 64500 that seems mm -hmm. like you get a free van. So how does this work? Good question. So that's going to be just for the build-out itself just the build. The base van, it totally depends on our customer, but they typically supply the base van for us, whether it's a brand new van or a lightly used one. We kind of like to give that option for customers who maybe want to find their own, or if they want to come to us and ask, well, you're the experts, what do you want us to get? We're here to help with that too. Yeah. Um, time frames. Um, mm -hmm. Vans are super hot right now, so maybe I just explained to us what a time frame is to whether you're bringing a van in that you own, mm -hmm. or um, you have to order a van, or you're bringing one in that's coming in from a like a dealer. Not yeah. Dealer. All right. So our builds right now, our next available build slot, we're booked out actually until the spring of next year. So right now, uh, as of today, our next build slot is going to be in the end of March, but we're already looking to add some builds for April. And once we get the van, everything's inside, we got all the parts and source and everything, and we get your build date started, the van takes about six to eight weeks to complete. So right now we're kind of hoping to get you guys vans by beginning of next summer. That's ideally what we're looking for. Offhighwayvan.com for all of our handles. Go to offhighwayvan.com slash sprinter van models in case you want to look at the specific models that we have. Or if you just want to email info at, at offhighwayvan.com, we can take care of you there. So too. yeah, 
had a great chance to work on Scott's van. So for him, actually, we just did a lift along with rear sumo installation. But one of our big things that we like to do here and what we're learning at is we're kind of becoming the experts on pans. And especially with little things like this with the Pro Masters and the Winnebago's, the Travados. And so we really like to look at suspension as another part of your van build out. And so one of those things that we offer is our Pro Master three inch lift kit. So that's what Scott got done on his along with the Sumos, which kind of help with a little bit of that washing that can go from side to side. But overall, that's uh, one of our big wheelhouses is we kind of want to be able to offer some services to help your van out. So we actually are doing a roof rack install in a van that's actually behind this one. And then we had another van in here that got an inverter installed. So overall our wheelhouse is pretty, pretty wide open, but I would say for the bulk of our customers, they're either looking for a full van conversion or some sort of suspension upgrade. So for right now, for those of you that are really interested in it, we have our three inch lift along with rear sumos, but hopefully in the future, we're gonna start getting some wheels and tire options some struts, some shocks, just because these rigs are really heavy and we kind of want to take care of them too. Kendall, thanks for masking up and, uh, and thanks, guys. Uh, sharing with, with, uh, with the audience. Really appreciate that. Absolutely, no problem. We look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks for looking. So Kendall, again, uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy day. You got nothing going on. Um, nothing. Give us a little sneak peek of uh, the Sundance kids, some of uh, how you guys roll with building out vans. Mm -hmm. And if this pan, the, uh, there's this guy climbing up on, on top of the sprinter. Um, <laughs> what we just talked about is something I've never really thought about, but Probably you, like me, what attracts mm -hmm. me to the vans, it's, it's really a reflection of your personality. Yeah. He mentioned, I'm like, you know what? That's all right. I mean, if you look at this one, pointing at you, sorry. Yeah. Um, this is a gal, and look how she's done her sprinter. It's a, it's a wrap, right? Yeah, she's done a wrap all around, including the color of the vehicle, the actual base color of the vehicle. Tree kind of decal coming across the window down to the side. Um, but she's added a bunch of features on there that, you know, got an owl rack, got the OHV rack on, top. rack on top. Kind of tells a little story where she's been almost. Yeah, and same with Lily, you know, um, you know wrapping my van. It's just, it's a reflection of the person. I've never really thought about that before. If you, you know, you roll up in a little bigger view, you're not going to do this kind of stuff probably mm -hmm. to it. So that's why vans maybe are just so, so hot. And here's the Sundance kid we saw earlier, um, and a couple others underway. So, Kendall, again, thanks for just um, taking Absolutely. time to give us a tour. Um, you guys got to come check these folks out if you're in the Salt Lake City area. Mm -hmm. Stop by, say hi. We'd love um, to. <laughs> yeah. We'd love to see you guys. Come on in whenever you want. Yeah, they're just the friendliest folks and really good work. So did you enjoy that tour? I had a blast making that video with you. It was a blast talking with Kendall and a blast walking through the Sundance Kid, one of their most popular uh, floor plans at off Highway Vans in Salt Lake City. My question for you is, is that the type of van you would like to RV in? What do you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Can you visualize yourself being in a ruggedized, off-highway style RV like that? Is it a competitor to the Revel in any way in your mind? If you got anything out of this video at all today, I sure would appreciate a thumb up. That helps others find the video, helps me know you liked it, helps YouTube know you like it, and they share that out to other folks. Comment below, again, answering those questions. What'd you like, dislike, competitor to the Revel, and can you visualize yourself being in a ruggedized vehicle like that? And if you wanna be uh, a subscriber to this channel because you like this kind of content, please just subscribe, cost you nothing, hit the notification bell. You get notified when we put out a new video, one or two videos a week. It would be an honor to have you part of the success of this channel. And I'm curious about the comment that uh, we talked about that the, I think one of the attractions of the van RVs in particular is that it can be a, a reflection of your personality. I wonder if you agree or disagree with that. Comment below, please. Until we see you again soon, I wish you to journey on. We'll see you soon.